In this age of new materials, the chemists and engineers of the laboratory are no longer just the backroom boys of the past. They're more often found in the front line among the production teams of industry. Working on the design of molecules, tailor making them into the long chain polymers we call plastics. They may be asked for a product requiring the evolution of a completely new type of raw material. One of the hallmarks of our day, plastics are accepted now as a challenge to traditional materials, where standards of quality and design are expected to be high and taken for granted. They have revolutionized many of the fundamentals of technology, and not only in the field of mass production. For instance, plastic has answered the needs of one man and revolutionized a technique practiced unchanged for over 2,000 years. The Flying Cross Pinnacle of Coventry Cathedral is the work of a young Englishman, Geoffrey Clark. His work ranges from abstract forms and architectural commissions for windows to a silver altar cross, a crown of thorns, and decorative panels for a luxury liner. Recently, he received a commission from the Brigade of Guards for their chapel in London, now rebuilt after it was destroyed by a flying bomb in 1944. He is to create two great screens either side of the chancel arch. Each will be 30 feet high and cast in aluminium. Enlarging the complex details of the model, he first makes many working drawings. The traditional ways of casting are very complicated. For Geoffrey Clark, they imposed too many restrictions on his imaginative freedom. It was usual for the piece to be transported to a foundry where the experts in casting finished the work. He wanted to keep control at every stage. How to simplify the casting process? After much experiment, he found the answer. Expanded polystyrene. Heat beads of polystyrene and they expand to 60 times their normal size. Expanded polystyrene is very light but rigid. It is used extensively for packaging delicate instruments, insulating buildings and refrigerators. Geoffrey Clark uses it for the creation of sculpture. Cutting it like cheese, he shapes it on a hot wire.
On the floor of the studio, his assistants have made a full-scale plan drawing of the guards' chapel screens. Then, layer by layer, Geoffrey Clark builds his great sculpture in plastic. On completion, the work is cut into several convenient sections and buried in the casting sand. Then in the furnace, the aluminium is brought to 850 degrees centigrade. A trace of sodium is added to ensure flexibility in the casting. At this temperature, under the impact of the molten aluminium, the plastic disintegrates and vaporizes through vents in the top of the mold until finally it is completely replaced by the metal in exact replica. One of his main concerns has been to keep the force of the original idea from the model through to the finished sculpture. Here, an artist has used his vision not only in the conception of a large-scale original work, but in bringing the technology of his art to a new stage of development. And who knows but that industry and her readiness to serve in producing a unique work of art may not have found a new kind of pioneer in the artist-craftsman. <laughs> 